it's time for another reading from Black Wolf Silver Fox. Uh, we are still in chapter one, and uh, this next part is a flashback sequence. In the book, I uh, marked the flashbacks with italics. I couldn't figure out how to do it here on video. I suppose I could have made my voice echo, 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 but uh, I'm just going to tell you flashback sequence, everybody. Flashback alert. Flashback. Uh, <clears throat> last uh, we were uh, at, Aramina had approached the altar and spoken with a deep voice and gotten permission to go home. And he said, I have a mission for you. So we swing straight from that to the flashback. <clears throat> Bleh. The city gates were shattered by the siege engines, and fire rampaged through most of the area. The few survivors fled, but were efficiently hunted down and exterminated. Their heads were severed and placed on pikes outside the walls. <coughs> One young woman, a fey creature of alluring dimensions, did not flee. The temple which had been her home for most of her life was now burning to a cinder right before her eyes. She stood fascinated while it crumbled inward, devouring itself in its death throes. There would be nothing left except fine ash when it was over. Winds whipped at her torn, sooty acolyte's robes, pulling it around her legs. Shaking a triumphant fist toward the blaze, she laughed a, cry, a high crazy note before turning away. That was when she saw the ancient priest who watched with sad eyes as he leaned on his staff. Apparently he had been there a while. Join the fun, old man, she said playfully. She traced her hips with her hands, stretched and pulled her hair up. You could use the excitement. The priest shook his head slowly. It is enough, said he to watch the damage you have done. She laughed again, but this time her mirth had a lower note to it. Yes, I thought so too. Coyly she approached him. He did not back away nor show any sign of malice toward her, not even when she kissed his breast. Disappointed, she pulled away from him. You aren't mad at me, she pouted, childishly putting her hands behind her back. The old elf responded. You were so full of promise, as if he spoke to an errant child and there were no fires around him. Promise, she shrieked suddenly, spreading her legs apart and bringing up two fists. What do you know of promise? You dined while I starved, scrubbing the floors with my bare hands. The only promise you feel was that of humiliation. I am sorry for what the others did to you. It was out of my hands and beyond my knowledge. You saw me every day. Her face was a mask of fury framed by the fire. Every day you walked by, too intent on your own inner peace, to see the suffering it caused, she crouched. We saved your life, the old priest said. You used me, the woman hissed. I wish, said the old elf as he stood a little taller and leaned a little bit less on his staff, that it had not come to this. With a shout and a flick of his wrist, he reached towards her. He was quicker than she expected, but she jumped out of reach just as his hands, glowing with white hot flame, groped for her face. She cracked his chin with her fist, and he staggered back, flailing wildly. His pinky grazed her cheek, burning it. She howled in pain, backing away while he regained his senses. They fainted, a slow dance in which she circled and he shifted, only to watch. With a new howl, she changed form and rushed him. His form matched hers, and two wolves, white on black, clashed in a rage of snapping teeth. Rolling over each other, tearing any flesh within reach, they hit the temple steps. Kicking legs scattered glowing embers. The black wolf somehow managed to clamp her teeth on the white wolf's inner thigh. Yelping, the white wolf broke free with a twist and scampered to get away. The black one latched to his ankle and held it tightly. She tried to get a better grip, but slipped. The white one twisted loose, snarled, and ripped into her front leg. She bit his nose, tasted blood, and limped back when her leg was released. The two faced each other, snarling for the briefest of moments. Then the black one leapt. The white wolf dodged, but slipped on some cooling embers and missed his footing. The black one was on him instantly. They rolled until the white wolf lay on his back. The impact knocked the breath from the aging werewolf. While he was stunned, the black one tore his throat. Hot blood sprayed into her eyes, and she knew that she had won. 
the black one's warbling howl sang victoriously across the burning wreckage. Warily, three elves and a dwarf approached from up a nearby street. Bl the black one barked at them, content to scratch one ear while she waited. When she was, it, was, it, was within reach, the leader scratched her ear. He was a charming elf with tails of brown hair. His sparkling green eyes studied the body of the white wolf as it slowly lost its transformation to again become the high priest. Well done, Aramina, he said. The black one huffed, wagging her tail, if a little dishonorably accomplished. The black one's eyes were full of mischief. However it was done, the job was complete. And what honor was between her and her enemies but a lie. And that's the end of chapter one. Next time I do this will be the beginning of chapter two, which is entitled Ian. Okay, bye-bye.